Today we're going to be doing something incredibly awesome. Right now I'm going to be loading In The Hunt, a great arcade game by Irem from 1993. And of course some of the key development team members, as I mentioned in a couple other videos, went on to make the great and venerable awesome first Metal Slug game for the SNK, uh, SNK company. I'm not going to edit my video, I'm just going to leave that flub there for your enjoyment. But one of the big things that has uh, been a problem for the mini NES and SNES has been the sound encryption not properly taken to the system. But this is no more. I've done a few fixes over the last couple of years. This is a permanent fix. You're no longer going to have bad sound. I'm going to show you what the games used to sound like. And then I'm going to show you the uh, new fix in action. So we're going to load in the hunt. And if you don't like Freddy Krueger scratching his nails across the chalkboard... Cover your ears for the next few seconds once the game loads because this is going to be gruesome, irritating, and uh, just traumatic in experience on your ears. Get ready. <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Makes it nearly impossible to play despite the game looking incredible. The sound effects are just hogwash at this point. Very, very terrible. Now what you might not realize is there is another subset of games that also had sound encryption issues and they are also fixed. I'm going to load you a perfect example of this. And in one of my original NES Classic test videos I demonstrated this game and it had awful, awful sound as well. The Nintendoverse games of which there are approximately 30 or so. There are a good 30 plus uh, Iron games as well as a good 30 plus Nintendoverse games and they all had sound issues. This is not going to be a problem anymore. I'm going to go to the Nintendo Verse games right now. We're going to load Verse Duck Hunt. And I actually love the Verse games because, uh, especially the light gun games, they can be played with a controller. It's really cool. I mean, we can't technically play with a controller on the NES or SNES cores for the light gun games as of yet. But yes, it is potentially possible. But you can definitely play them on the arcade core. Especially May 2003 Extreme which is my primary core for arcade games. And of course I use Final Burn Alpha as well. I mean, they're both incredible cores. I love each and every one of my MAME and Final Burn Alpha cores, but on the Mini NES and SNES, the most optimal cores to use, because of the hardware of course, would be MAME 2003 Extreme on the low end of the spectrum, and of course Final Burn Alpha 2012 on the high end of the spectrum. But listen to this atrocious sound here. Unplayable because of the sound. But I'm playing with the controller, which is still cool. It's very, very cool. But now what I'm going to do is actually switch over to the computer, and I'm going to install the updated MAME 2003 Extreme, which has the fix that is going to once and for all take care of the iRIM and Nintendoverse sound encryption issues. So here we go over to the PC. And you may have seen me do, uh, those of you who have been following me for a while, when I had to deal with uh, various conflicts with System 32 and IRAM and such, and even Dates, I did alternate H mods. I did an alternate H mod just for the custom OST for Michael Jackson's Moonwalker as well. But for right now, we're going to end this once and for all. We're going to go to the core set update. And this will go out today. 8.11. We're going to go down to uh, MAME 2003 Extreme. In this uh, MAME 2003 IRAM, I'm going to delete it from the set because you no longer need it. Everything's fixed permanently. So I'm going to copy and paste this. And again, you can uh, do the module uninstall right here. You can do it that way and just install it right through there. MAME 2003 Extreme. Right here. And that'll be under... Came at the Manic Experimental Core Set. You just copy all the HMODs directly into your Hashi directory. Like this. Just copy them all right over. I'm going to my Hashi directory. User Mods. Copy and paste. And that's how I would have it in there so I could use it in the Module Uninstall Install tab. But I'm going to do it the other way. I'm going to do it the USB host way. I'm going to open up the USB host drive. Hashi. Create a folder called Transfer. Copy and paste it. And then when I power up the system, it's going to install it to my NAND or external RetroArch, depending on which way I go. I prefer to do my NAND as much as I possibly can. But I'm going to boot up now. And 
there have been a couple of things that people have uh, been asking about. One is, uh, I like the Disable the Hashi logo and such. There's a reason I like having this Hashi logo, because if I'm troubleshooting for someone, and they say they're mini in the S or SNES is getting a black screen, it is a lot easier for me to know whether or not they have Hashi installed if there's a Hashi boot screen. Because obviously, the screen would not be here if you didn't install Hashi. But if they install like a blank screen or have a different boot screen, and it's not showing up, then you know there's an issue. And the other one is uh, RetroArch uh, loading. Obviously, if you do not have RetroArch properly installed and you try loading the game, you will just get a blank screen instead and it won't do RetroArch uh, loading. So you know there's an issue. So that very much helps out with troubleshooting, being able to see a boot, a boot screen like this, as well as the RetroArch loading screen. It helps me out in troubleshooting. Because oftentimes, somebody will try powering their system via their TV or even their PC, and there's simply not enough power going to the system, and they will never truly boot into the system. They, they might just get a blank screen with only sound instead. I mean, so make sure you use the true power source, like an AC adapter and such that came with your system. Try not powering the system via your PC or TV. But right now, we're actually going to get a double splash screen. It's going to disappear, and it's going to reappear to signify that the main 2003 Extreme properly updated. I'm looking at my flash drive. I actually do have LED lights on my flash drive. It is loading fast right now, so it should be booting into the system anytime now. Because once they go from fast to slow, it means the system's about to boot up. It usually takes about 30 seconds to a minute or so to install HMODs if you do it the transfer method like I'm doing right here. Okay, we're getting the fast LED lights now, and uh, we should be booting into the system anytime now. I'd say 3, 2, 1... Contact! Okay, I'm a little bit off there. So, here we go. Three, two, one. Contact again. Okay, I got it the second time around. Now we're going to get our double splash screen there. And we're going to try out some iRim and Nintendoverse games with the appropriate encryption sound fixes in place. And you're only going to need to install MAME 2003 Extreme once. You don't need the variant of iRim anymore. You're good to go with just this core. You can run all your custom OSDs, your iRim and Nintendoverse sound encryption fixes, your Data East encryption fixes, System 32 games, and countless other additions. Uh, we're going to reload uh, Duck Hunt. And it'll actually run with appropriate sound. And for the record, on my uh, mobile phone, as a text notification, I have a uh, sound sample from Duck Hunt. Really cool stuff there. It never ever gets old. I love all the sound effects from the various NES games. They, they're perfect as uh, notifications for alarms, text notifications, ringtones and such. I have the Zel main Zelda theme as my ringtone. The Duck Hunt sound sample as my text notification. I have a Final Fantasy theme. Final Fantasy theme, uh, I believe the Terra theme is my uh, alarm. But look, we're getting a much better sound right now. Very, very awesome. So much better. And some of you might not realize that if you play the original Duck Hunt on a Nintendo, you can actually use the controller to control the duck. And I missed the duck. Let's try to get one duck before we move to our next game. Come on, let me shoot the dog. I always wish we could shoot the dog. There we go, I got it a duck. But yes, very, very cool there. I love having the proper sound now. Now we're going to move on to an iRim game. I don't need to load in the hunt again because I already know it's going to have proper sound, but I'm going to load another iRim game that is incredibly cool. And you're not going to think it's cool when I describe it, but when you see it in action, it is cool. But I'm going to go to another iRim game right now. We're going to do a little bit of a uh, swap back and forth here, but... Actually, I'm going to load another Nintendo First game since we're over here. I'm going to load uh, Freedom Force. And we all know how Nintendo had their silv approval. And they always said they had to, ha like, generally check out a game, do their censorship and such. This is the game that I found that I believe Nintendo completely missed. Made by the great company Sunsoft, who made games such as Gremlins, to the new batch, Batman, you know, the movie game. And, of course, uh, Euphoria, which was only released in Europe, as far as I know. Great, great game. Blaster Master... And so many other incredible games. But this is a great game. And typically, Nintendo would remove and censor violence and religious overtones of games. But this game right here, it has something that really struck me as out when I was test, test demonstrating it the other day. But again, we have the proper sound here. Really cool. 
Watch what happens when I shoot somebody. Blood pours out of their chest. You wouldn't expect that in a Nintendo game. Look at that blood pouring out of the enemies. Really cool here. But yes, really, really cool game. Definitely check Freedom Force out. And I find it incredibly funny. I even tried the Nintendo version. And yes, the blood still pours out of their chest. But I cannot think of many other NES games, if any at all, that have blood pouring out of somebody's chest. That's absolutely hilarious. If you're wondering about the Nintendo first games and which games are actually different from the home versions, Super Mario Brothers actually has a greater challenge. It has a whole set of levels that were in the Japanese uh, Mario Lost level, should I say, as well as needing to get 150 coins to unlock a free guy. So definitely check out uh, Super Mario Brothers Verse. It's a great game to play. And uh, we have Gumshoe, which is a light gun game. Hogan's Alley, which is a light gun game. But I'm going to load another uh, Irem game while we're here. Hey guys, let's get together, have a few beers, and let's play this Peter Pan game. Actually, it's a game called Hook. Yes, it is based on the Peter Pan license, but in the hands of Irem, it is actually a truly and totally kick-ass game. Well worth a playthrough. So dig it. This is another game that invariably had bad sound encryption issues and I'm actually playing the Japanese version of this which has two added bonuses. One it has more vibrant color, it looks far better and superior to the color palette of the USA and world version and the challenge level is higher. If I'm going to play a game I like it to be challenging. I don't want it to be a pushover game. The American release of it is too easy. This version right here, the Japanese version has true challenge. And some of you might not realize why sometimes Japanese games are more challenging than uh, American version games. Because, uh, I'm, I'm actually saying this as another example. This it works in reverse. BioBilly for America is actually more challenging than BioBilly in Japan. There's a reason why. Because in America, we were able to rent games at Blockbuster. And what people would do is they'd actually rent a game and beat it. Never want to buy it. But in Japan, uh... They didn't have to do that, so what they did is they just made the game as is. But in America, they made the game more challenging, so you'd have to run it multiple times and or just buy the game. So if you actually play uh, the Japanese version called Mad City of BioBilly, it is much more incredibly difficult than the American version of BioBilly because they were unable to run games in Japan. It was never allowed to be done back in the time. But look, the sound is working great, and yes, we're playing an incredibly cool hook game right now, Peter Pan License. Irem simply cannot go wrong with any other game. If you want to see more awesomeness as far as BioBilly, watch my NES Classic AI exploit video about BioBilly, which I have showcased a couple times. Some very cool stuff here. And yes, there are 30 other uh, Irem games that benefit from the sound encryption fixes. We're going to load another one right now, but that's Hook. We'll load one more. But yes, definitely check out the different versions because even with uh, Night Slashers, which is a Data East game, of course, there is red blood in the Japanese version, but in the American version, it is green blood. Okay, what else do we have? Another game by Irem that didn't previously work right. We have uh, Undercover Cops. Another game that had tremendously awesome, should I say, atrocious sound. But now it works perfectly well. Great sound encryption fix there. So many, many things being fixed in this update. And I hope you guys and gals have a great weekend enjoying all this awesome stuff. From the Double Dragon Custom OST, Nintendo 64 Crash Bypass fixes. I mean, just everything. Anything and everything but the kitchen sink here. So we're loading Undercover Cops right now. Another game with a great sound encryption fix. And here we go. The BIOS load up screen, which you typically get when you plug in the game in the arcade. Yes, yes, she, yes, she got. Look, it's running with great sound now. Awesome. A very, very underappreciated arcade game. Everybody knew about Final Fight, but not everybody knew about Undercover Cops. It is really an awesome game. It's actually a three-player game to boot. 
And for the record, not this update, but next update, I'm going to do a two-player, four-player, six-player, eight-player mode activate H mod for you guys and gals to enjoy, as well as a tutorial. But hope you enjoyed the video. Enjoy your Nintendo verse as well as your Irem encryption fixes in the context of one singular, one main 2032 rule them all core. Have a great guy, guys and gals, and uh, enjoy the update.